Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody's doing well out there today. Uh, in recent videos, I've shown a, a few different ways to set up a, a software defined network. Uh, in the past, we've talked about like zero tier and tail scale, as well as another one that escapes me at the moment, but we've talked about a few different options. And what I wanna do in this video is kind of expand on the zero tier uh, video that I did a while back. And in this video, I wanna show you how to set up your own zero tier controller. So when we originally set up zero tier, uh, this was the controller dashboard uh, that's hosted on my.zerotier.com, uh, where in here we can see that we've got one network and we've got three out of 50 authorized members. None of them are online right now. Uh, we can actually see the networks that we've got. We can create networks. We can kind of go through that process of, of configuring all of that from uh, zerotier.com's website. While I've been doing some research about some of these services and whatnot, I actually ran across a couple of different self-hosted options in Docker. So I wanna show you how to deploy a, a, a dashboard like this, a controller on your Docker setup uh, that you can use either, either locally or you can actually attach a domain name to it. That's actually what I'm gonna do in this video. Uh, I'm going to be using uh, Docker and Portainer. I'm going to have a uh, a domain name that I purchased from uh, Porkbun. I'm also going to use uh, Cloudflare for my DNS management. And uh, there was one other one. I'm going to use Nginx Proxy Manager to facilitate the connection uh, from the internet to my container. So all of that being said, uh, let's jump over here and take a look at what we've got going on. Uh, so here we are again, this is the zero tier uh, network. We're actually gonna leave this screen up or this page up because here in a minute, there is something we're going to need. Uh, so we'll come back to that. But right here is this uh, this setup from Key Networks. Uh, this uses uh, zero tier one and ZTNCY, uh, where it says it'll allow you to set up a standalone zero tier network controller uh, use or with a web user interface in a container. Uh, below that, they've given some credit to uh, the people uh, the, or the, the place where they forked it. And then below that, there is this bit of information here on how you can deploy it. And then, of course, further down, uh, there are some uh, some environmental variables that you can uh, use, modify, whatever uh, in your environmental variable uh, file. Now, <clears throat> here's the thing, right? This is that environmental variable file right here uh, that we would get by uh, cloning this repository. And you can do that if you'd like. However, uh, because I wanna kind of simplify things here as much as possible, I am going to do this all in Portainer. So I've moved all of the environmental variables out of that, uh, that file and put them back in a stack that I've actually created uh, over here. I will have this available uh, in a link in the description down below so you can take a look at that. Copy and paste, modify and deploy. So uh, this is the, the stack that I came up with. Uh, it uses all of the same stuff in here. I just moved everything out. Uh, so that it's all readable in this one area. So here is uh, the stack that I created. You can see it's a version three. Uh, it's got a couple of volumes that it creates. Uh, if you want to map your own volumes, uh, you can remove this entirely uh, like so, and then uh, map your volumes down here. Uh, for the sake of simplicity, because I'm using a Synology device, uh, I, I, I messed with this for like an hour trying to map things and created folders and gave permissions and went through the whole process. And I just found that doing the volumes like this is just easier on a Synology device. Um, so below that, uh, we've got a service. Uh, it's that ZTN CUI, uh, which would be a network tier, or zero tier network controller user interface. Uh, below that, of course, we've got key networks and that uh, that same uh, service name for the image. We are going to go ahead and give it a container name. Uh, if you're doing this this way, you probably don't really need that line, but it's there anyway. Below that, we've got some user IDs and uh, uh, UID and GID. Uh, so you want to get those for your setup. In fact, uh, now that I think about it, this isn't correct. Uh, mine, um, if I if I come over to here. Uh, here is, I, I'm, I'm SSH'd into uh, my Synology device, so I can just do ID uh, DB tech, and I can see that it's the user ID should actually be 1026, and my group ID should be 100. So we'll do 1026. Below that, the, the, uh, the, the, the setup is going to be for production. Uh, the HTTPS port that we're going to use will be 3443. If you change that there, make sure you change it down below uh, in this ports area as well. Uh, the uh, the UI password, this will be the password that you'll use the first time. You will have to change that later when you log in. So it's actually fine to leave this as password uh, because you're going to change it as soon as you log in. Uh, below that, 
we we uh, we declare what domain we're going to use here. I'm going to use zt.dbtech.click. Uh, my address, this one here is actually optional. That would be the public IP address of your home, your business, whatever. Uh, this is the, uh, the public IP address that your ISP gave your account. So, uh, of course, that's not my real public IP address. That's just what I've got in the, there for the sake of this video. Below that, of course, we've got a couple of volumes. Uh, one is for uh, the user interface. One is for actual uh, zero tier. Um, I want to make sure, okay, those are correct. Uh, below that, we've got a couple of ports. Again, this is going to be our communications port uh, for, for HTTPS traffic. Uh, below that, the, this 3180, uh, as they talk about right down here, uh, this image exposed a an HTTP server on port 3180. 3180 I don't know what that was. Um, and so you don't necessarily need, I don't think, but it would require modifying some other things. So I left it in there just for the sake of simplicity. Uh, with all of that being said, here is our setup. Uh, so basically, all you've got to do at this point is come over here and click uh, deploy the stack. Of course, mine says update the stack because my uh, my uh, editor was already full. I've already done this. It's already in there. Uh, so that's why mine says update versus deploy. So go ahead and click that. And uh, then we will come back when that's actually deployed. OK, so here we are. Uh, the uh, UI says it's running. So let's go ahead and take a look at the logs. Uh, it looks like it's doing something there, uh, still kind of going through a process. So uh, what we can actually do is pop this open uh, over here and then drop that to one second. So we can kind of see uh, how much CPU usage, how much network usage, memory usage, that sort of thing. So we can kind of monitor that and get an idea of what's going on there. <clears throat> uh, but of course, the other thing that we could do uh, is just come over here and hit this uh, 3443. If you click this and it takes you to 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 or then port 3443, uh, all you've got to do is come over here to your endpoints, uh, click on local and put in your public IP or your host name uh, in there. And that will uh, make it so that when you click this, like so, uh, it'll actually take you to the right spot there. Now, as we can see here, uh, it, it, it sent an empty response. Uh, so let's uh, let's come back over here to the logs and take a look. So nothing there has changed. So we'll go ahead and pop that back open, refresh, nothing. So our next step will actually be to uh, go over to Cloudflare and create a C name for our subdomain. So let's jump over here to Cloudflare. Of course, I'm using Cloudflare. That doesn't mean you have to. Uh, this is just what I'm doing to manage my DNS. Uh, I'm a big fan of Cloudflare. I've been using them for nearly a decade and they have saved me so much headache. I can't recommend them enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, I already got an A record set up for the, for the root domain that points to my IP address. You can't see that, but that's what it's doing there. So what I'll do is click on add a record. I'll change this to a C name record. Um, and then I'll do a ZT for zero tier. Um, and then I'll do at, and that's just going to point uh, to the root domain. So we've got zt.dbtech.click. So I'm just going to copy that just in case I need it later. And then I'm going to switch this proxy status to DNS only for a moment. Uh, then I'm going to click on save. And now we've got our C name set up and ready to go. So the next thing we want to do here is actually come over to SSL slash TLS um, and make sure that uh, this is set up to be either full or strict. Uh, I've, I've had to play with that a little bit to get it to work correctly, um, but we're, we'll leave it at full for right now. Uh, just make sure that that's, that's the minimum setting you've got there. Uh, so let's jump over here to Nginx Proxy Manager. Uh, here we can see I've got uh, a few things in here. Uh, what I'm going to do is add a proxy host. I'm going to type that in. Um, and then I'll do 192.168.1.25 and then 3443. Uh, block common exploits, that's probably a good idea. And then we'll come over here and we will request uh, a new SSL. We're going to force that and agree and click Save. Now, hopefully this works. If it does, great. If not, we may have to go back and mess with a couple of other little things. Okay, so that went through. So now if I click on uh, this right here. Okay, so it's still actually going through the process of setting up. Uh, the other thing I want to take a look at just real quick, um, just to make sure that I'm not wrong about that, is click on edit. And we're going to change that to HTTPS. Because if we remember correctly, if we go back over to here, um, our... Um, there, there was that variable for the HTTPS port. Um, so we're going to switch this to the scheming HTTPS. Click Save, and then 
uh, refresh, and there we go. So now we are uh, on our dashboard. Of course, we're not logged in yet. There's nothing to see here, though. If you do click uh, this right here, it'll take you to Zero Tier's website. Uh, if we click up here on the top left, that's going to take you to Key Networks. They're the guys behind this. Um, so what we actually want to do is come up here to log in. Uh, we're going to enter our, 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 our username, which is going to be admin, and then password. Like so, and then bang, immediately, like I said, it wants us to change that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Like so, and let's say you were setting this up for a client, for instance, right? You could actually make them change their password next time they log in if you're just going to have this one account here. So uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to click on set password, like so. And uh, then I'll go ahead and close that. And I'll go to the home page. And this zero tier controller has a zero tier address of, uh, we're gonna need that for later when we actually want to attach to it. Uh, I am going to uh, just co uh, connect a couple of devices to it. Uh, I'm not gonna go too deep into that as I already made that video. So if you wanna know how to do that, great. Um, but we're gonna keep uh, this zero tier address available. So we can list all the networks, which there are currently none. So what we wanna do, like it says here, is click add a network. Uh, I'm going to call this uh, DB Tech, like so, and create a network. And then <clears throat> uh, this kind of gives us an idea of what's going on uh, in here as far as details are concerned. Uh, what I want to do is go to Easy Setup, and you could manually uh, set up uh, a network address subnet if you wanted to do that, or you can just click the button and it does it for you. So we're going to go ahead and just let it do that, and I'm going to click Submit. Um, and then that's uh, all we need to do here. Again, if we come back, uh, we get, uh, there are zero members here and that's fine for right now. Um, so the next thing I wanna do uh, now that I think about it is come over to uh, zero tier right here. Uh, I want to join a network. And of course that brought me clear down here. Now, actually I lied. What I wanna do first is I want to uh, go to preferences and right here, make sure on your Windows instances uh, is uh, to make sure that your central instance is HTTP colon forward slash forward slash whatever subdomain or domain you put in for your uh, Nginx proxy manager, uh, what you set up in your DNS, what you put in your environmental variable, they should all be the same. So put that here. Now, the other thing you may want to do is actually get an API key from zero tier just to avoid any issues later on. So we can go ahead and do that. Uh, I'll come over here to zero tier. I'm going to go to uh, account. I'm going to add a new token. Um, and this is going to be a uh, demo token. And I'll click generate. And I'll go ahead and copy that and click done. And so then I can come back over here to zero tier. Paste that in there. Uh, and you can decide whether or not you want to launch this on startup if you'd like. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. And then I'll again, I'll right click and uh, join a network. And of course, it always brings it up in the wrong screen there. Well, there we go. Holy cow. So next thing we want to do is actually jump back over to our dashboard. Uh, grab this like so. Paste. Uh, I'm just going to allow it to do everything there. Click join. And then I can come over here and refresh. Oh, hopefully. There we go. Um, so there it is. There is my member ID that we can see if I click this again. Uh, there is my node 6BF0E71A37. Uh, that node ID matches up with that member ID. So we know we've got the right device there. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just call this PC. Like so, I'm going to say it's authorized. Now, there is an active bridge mode here, and I haven't done anything with that yet. Um, but, but there is a, a bridge mode available here. Um, and then, of course, there's a, a thing here for IP assignment. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and click on refresh. And bang, there is uh, my uh, software-defined LAN address so that I can access that from other devices. So while we're at it, I've already got zero tier installed on here. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm actually going to copy this again just to make sure. I'm going to do uh, sudo uh, zero oops, tier CLI join, uh, and then I'll paste... That's just my root password. There we go, 200 join, okay. That's good. So what I can do now uh, is again, refresh right there uh, is my member ID. Um, I, I'm, I know there's a way to look that up, but you can do that on your time. Uh, I know that this is the right device. So I'm gonna call this Jarvis. 
I'm going to go ahead and say he's authorized as well. Uh, and I'll click refresh. Uh, maybe one more time. There we go. So now I have an IP address for Jarvis. So now I have a Windows machine and uh, a Synology slash Linux machine uh, set up on my zero tier network via the controller on my Docker setup. So what we want to do next is actually come over to here. Um, I'm going to do new. There we go. So we're going to come over to here. Um, I'm, I'm going to uh, change this. Nope, nope, nope. Like so. And I'll do double backslash. 10.139.116.143, like so. And there is all of my or all of my Synology shared folders. Uh, if I do this, uh, just to verify that, I can type in uh, Jarvis, like so. And there they are, uh, basically uh, next to each other here. And you can see that those are uh, effectively the same thing. So that's how easy it is to set up your own controller for a zero tier network. Of course, this is all done through Docker. And of course, I also used Nginx Proxy Manager to, to connect the domain that I got from Porkbun that I run my DNS from through Cloudflare. So lots well, of little bits and pieces, but uh, I feel good with that security measure. Uh, also, you wanna make sure that uh, uh, of course, you're uh, always use HTTPS is on. Those sorts of settings always need to be on for the best security. But it's a very simple process to go through and set this up. Uh, and hopefully you found this video helpful in showing how to do that. Of course, if you did find it helpful, it'd be great if you could just give this video a quick thumbs up. Really would help me out quite a bit. Uh, and I'd appreciate it quite a bit as well. So uh, again, all of this will be linked in the description down below, uh, both the original uh, GitHub write-up as well as the stack uh, that I put together for the sake of uh, setting this up a bit more easily, in my opinion. Um, of course, while you're down there, there will be a couple of different ways you can support the channel if you want to do that uh, via a link there as well. Uh, of course, I want to give a big shout out to my, my patrons, my channel members. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. It really does mean a lot to me, uh, especially with the craziness of everything going on right now. So with all that said, though, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.